Hello, and welcome to Look Smarter Than You Are with OBIEE. This is the second part in importing BSO SBASE databases into the repository. So what I normally do, because I might want to import either the same cube or multiple cubes, and I don't want them to all fall under this one local host connection. I like to have kind of a one-to-one -one connection going on where each database is its own connection. That's just the way I like to do things. So if I need to take one database offline, I don't have to take them all offline if I'm doing work on them, things like that. But I have seen environments where people will use one connection and have multiple databases underneath. So it's kind of a user preference in this, in this particular example. It's more about what works best for your environment. For me, I like the one-to-one -one where I have one connection per database. In your environment, it might work better that you have multiple. So it's kind of your choice here. I am going to right click on that server name though and rename it. So from this menu, I'm going to choose rename from the pop-up menu once I right clicked it. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of local host name, just hit my backspace key. And I'm just going to call this BSO import. I am not a big fan of spaces in my server names and normally I don't like them in my connection pool either. However, OB automatically creates our connection pool and as you can see, it does have a space in the name so I'm gonna leave that but I am going to right click my connection pool and rename that as well. And I normally just add an underscore at the end. Let me try that rename again. At the tail end to make sure that I keep it the same name as my data source. Now, I like to, as I say, keep the, the one to one, and that's why I rename this server up here, the data source itself, if you will, as well as the connection pool because that way when I right click and I say to import metadata, I know it's going to be, yes, I can import all the databases for that connection pool, but again, I'll only import that one. So to show you what I mean, I'm gonna go ahead and click on import metadata here. And you can see it takes us right back to the screen we were just on where we're here in the local host and it's saying, which database do you want to bring through? And so I would again, keep it just that one database. And that way, when I want to import a different S-based cube, I would come over and do File and Import Metadata and repeat the steps that we just did to bring a different database in. Or if I wanted the same database in, but with different settings, and I have done that, where I come and import the database multiple times, and I have different settings for certain, certain dimensions or hierarchies. All right, so let's take a look at the measures dimension for just a second. And you'll see there it is, Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, Gen 4. Gen 4 is down there. Okay. Whoops, let's open that up again. So, hmm, that's fine. But then what is this little guy down here, this basic measure? What is that all about? What is Obi up to? Well, Obi has taken the dollar values, your, your numeric data, and has aggregated it into one column in this particular database. This is how OB gets the best performance. It's always about aggregations. So that's how it's going to perform much better. Now, in case you're saying, hmm, I don't get it. I don't understand. How can I add my um, inventory balance to my opening inventory balance if I needed to? How would I go about doing that? Well, you could create a calculation using your measures, your members from your measures dimension. They're still here. Or you could, if you chose to, do something a little bit different. I'm going to right-click the database, and I'm going to choose to convert my measure dimension to flat measure so I can flatten out my measures. And it's going to create a separate column for every member in my measures dimension. Okay, now this is not recommended when you have uh, over 200 members, even OB will generate an error in that situation. So you do want to keep it very small. But now you can see instead of just that one basic measure member, I have one for every single member 
from my measures dimension. So if I needed to do some calculations, it's probably a little bit easier, but I'm of the opinion that calculations belong in S-space. That's where your strong calculation engine is, so that's where your calculations should be done. But every once in a while, there is a need in OB to create some calculated columns. So with your measures flattened, as long as it's a fairly small amount, you'd be able to do things like adding certain specific members together much easier. So this can be an easier approach to handling measures or you can leave it aggregated. Again, remember OB likes things aggregated. So the more that you can leave them as a single column, the better the performance will be for OB. And while we're speaking of performance, we're, we're assuming here that your S-Base cube is optimized for reporting so that it performs really well in a querying situation. That's the best thing you can do. Thanks for watching and look for parts three and four of how to import SBSO databases into the repository.